all you appreciate it. Don't forget if you uh, miss anything or want to hear anything again, Blaine and Mickey podcast is where you go to get it. We want some Titans news. We go to Sammy Phelan, future arena football quarterback, Sam Phelan of Agency oh, Sports. Yeah, that's right. Hey, man, Blaine and me saw your audition video. You, you got a cannon. Did they uh, they call you back for the second round? We need to know all this stuff, Sam. No callback yet. Oh, man. What? what? All right. I think I was lacking in the athleticism a little bit. I could take uh. a couple notes from the guys down here at the Combine. But, I, you know, I, I was happy to hold my own, maybe turn a couple of heads. Uh, first football practice, not not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, now, man. Did, did you throw it, throw it 80 yards, though? It looked like you threw it really far. I was trying to see if you got to that Milton level. Yeah, I was sitting right around like that, right around that 50, 55-yard deep ball mark. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It's the pitcher in me, fellas. It's, uh, you know, I don't know if the mechanics are quite where they need to be, but I can get the ball. I can get them somewhere. Did you play high school? No, man, I didn't. My mom was a, uh, she, she was freaking out about the, the head injury stuff, so I was never allowed to play football. It's it's a pipe dream. But oh, now you were a baseball guy, though, and a pitcher, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I okay. was a baseball All pitcher, right. uh, did, a, did a little bit of that in college, and so I, I, I've i got the arm in me. That's why they were asking me. They're like, oh, what position do you want to try out as? I'm like, I think I can blend in best as a quarterback. The rest <laughs> of it, it'll be ugly. If I'm running a 5-2-40 as a wide receiver, we got problems. All right, I want to check out your explosiveness. What would you do mm-hmm. on the broad or vert or, you know, if you can remember, though, your 40, what would you I, do? They didn't have the broad vert, uh, so I didn't get to get a chance to do those. I think I was like a four six seven in the shuttle, and then a uh, five two in the forty. Oh, oh, you ran the same time as the guy that was three sixty six. You ran a five two. No, I'm just uh, yeah, saying, I mean, that's, man, that's still five two. I mean, good. that's guys are pro athlete. That's yeah, still pretty yeah, good. That, that's still pretty good. <laughs> Hey, listen, I was I was feeling good about myself because I came in better than Tom Brady did when he was at the NFL Combine. And so I'm sitting here piping my like, like pumping myself up a little bit, and then 366 pounds of Andre Sweat has to go put up the same time as me and make me be like, ah, oh, yeah, there's the reality check right there. Oh, man. Speaking of Tom Brady, did you see the simulation of him when he came out of college to him running, I guess, to 40, I guess, literally, uh, you know, a week or so ago and – and he ran faster today as a 46-year-old than he was when he was 22. Yeah. That was crazy. No, again, that, that that's another thing that burst my bubble. Is I was sitting here, I texted my dad, I called my dad. I'm like, Dad, I beat Tom Brady in the 40. And then 40-something-year-old Tom Brady has to go out and beat his own time oh, and then man. make me look like a loser. Oh, now, that guy's had a piece of white bread since, like, oh, 1998. Yeah, so you know That's true. <laughs> I mean, you're living your life, Sam. Um, all right, biggest takeaways from Ran – and Callie that you heard up there because you were up there, you still up there. Uh, you got to be part of the sidebar. Biggest takeaway from those guys? Uh, yeah, I don't want to, like, obviously I know this is the season of lies and smoke screens and deception and all of that. Mm-hmm. Messaging comes out with purpose, but I, I have a hard time listening to anything that was said and not feeling like wide receiver at seven is a very, very – real possibility Mm -hmm. and i would even go and say a likely possibility uh when i I hear three different things three different ways that the titans brass talked about wide receivers that i think point me in that direction number one is just prioritizing pass catchers over offensive linemen and brian callahan saying hey when all things are equal i will go with the guy that scores the touchdowns over the offensive linemen and we saw him make a similar decision when he was with Cincinnati. So how is that a factor? Then I hear Rand Carson talk about Bill Callahan, Bill Callahan's clinic with Mm -hmm. pass protection reps, Bill Callahan's ability to develop players. The words that Rand used were leeway, that it could give them some leeway when it comes to drafting offensive linemen. Uh, And then I hear him talk about the depth. Rand Carson said they're deep at two areas in this class, wide receiver and offensive line but said that you have to be strategic, and if there's an offensive lineman they think they could get in the second round and a wide receiver that's elite up there in the first, they might have to pull the trigger. So I come away from it really looking at the three wide receivers at the top of this draft class and saying, do the Titans like these guys enough to go with them at seven? I feel a lot stronger about it now than I did before Indianapolis. Hanging out with Sam Phelan of A to Z Sports at Sam underscore Phelan on Twitter. Well, Sam, how's this uh, playing out there with Harrison Jr. not even talking to the media there? I, I thought that was the whole point of going there, that 
And, <laughs> uh, but man, uh, so people could get to know you at least uh, from that perspective, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I've tried to give him the benefit of the doubt here. Like, yeah. I, you don't want to test. I can understand that. I yep. actually think it's probably a smart move for Marvin Harrison Jr. to not test. Uh, I think you can avoid some of the, like, the weigh-ins and the, the physical stuff, right? If you want to do that, okay. But Marvin Harrison Jr. did not show up to his podium today to talk with the media, and the media basically got no warning. It was almost as if, the NFL officials were waiting on Marvin to show up, and he just didn't show up. They ended up coming up to the podium, putting up Drake May's name tag instead, and saying, Marvin won't be speaking at the podium. We have no further information. My understanding is that he's not even in Indianapolis anymore. Okay. So uh, uh, I don't think it's a great look. I, I don't know if it affects his draft stock a ton, because he is still, I think, the consensus number one wide receiver. But I would say... It's closer than Marvin Harrison Jr. might want to believe how some of these teams view the wide receivers between him and Malik Neighbors or even Roma Dunze in that conversation a little bit. So not a great look, not a great way to start the NFL career and not how I would have done things if I was Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm, is that the, I guess, the talk behind the scenes uh, via media or is that just kind of coming from you? Well, I think what I've heard kind of across the board is that Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably the consensus number one, but there are teams around the league that have Malik Neighbors as their top wide receiver. And so if it is, whether it's Harrison at one or Neighbors at one, if the two of them are relatively close on a big board, uh, you know, how do teams factor in behavior before the NFL draft into their decision-making? I I don't know if it, like, him not testing, as I said, would impact anything but not speaking to the media if you have some red flags there perhaps that is a factor in the decision if he was the slam dunk one one wide receiver maybe he gets away with it i I just don't know if the gap is as big as he may want to believe so neighbors undunze or harrison and anyone else you want to put in this conversation who is your number one receiver if you were the titans I, I mean, I think if you if you had your pick of the three, I think right now I would still take Marvin Harrison Jr. But uh, I, I am sitting here crossing my fingers, hoping that somehow Malik Neighbors finds his way to number seven. Uh, I, I frankly, him and Roma Dunze both were really impressive to me, just in the way that they spoke to the media today and the the type of speakers that they are and the type of people uh, that they are. Uh, Malik Neighbors, I think, has a little bit more of an explosive ability to make some contested catches down the field as well as the yak. Uh, I think he's comfortable both in the slot and on the outside. He said playing in the slot is easier, but playing on the outside comes a little bit more naturally to him. Uh, He, I think I would give a slight edge to Roma Dunze if I was picking between the two, but uh, I got to be honest, I feel pretty strongly, I feel good about all three of those receivers there. I'm not sure there's a myth in the group. Mm. Any sleepers uh, through your time here at wide receiver real quick? Wide receiver, a couple sleepers. I mean, it's going to be difficult because I think you have to – do the Titans take a wide receiver in the first round? If not, then you're probably looking at 38, and could they reach on somebody? I, I still think – you know, Lad McConkey is starting to grow on me a little bit, and I really liked what I heard from Adonai Mitchell. Um, the mm-hmm. injuries, I guess, a little bit of a concern with A.D. Mitchell, oh. but uh, a ton of speed, a ton of versatility. Um, a lot of these other guys, unfortunately, the Keon Coleman's, the Brian Thomases, I love what I see from them. I just don't think they make it out of the first round. Uh, So I would look right now at potentially that 38 spot. I'll give you Adonai Mitchell as my name to keep an eye on. Mm, There you have it, Sam Phelan, A to Z Sports. Where are you on Brock Bauer, Sam? Because, you know, he said, uh, you know, Nashville would be a great place uh, to be, and that got everybody talking, and now he's getting asked about it again at the Combine this week. But – if he's there at seven, are, are you like a take him absolutely or are you like a no, there are more pressing needs guy? Yeah, I think there's more pressing needs. Uh, I, I think so. Brock Bowers to me is a, a slam dunk contributor. Like I think he's definitely going to be a good tight end in the NFL. 
you could even make the case to me that he is a very good tight end at the mm-hmm. NFL and that you pretty much know that coming in. He's one of the best tight end prospects we've seen uh, in a very long time. I'm just not sure I'm fully convinced he's a difference-making weapon uh, at the same level as some of these wide receivers are. Brock Bowers could be a good tight end in the league. He could be an 800 to 1,000-yard tight end receiving year after year after year. And I still don't think he would have as big of an impact as a Malik Neighbors or a Roma Dunze on this offense. So uh, tight end is a luxury at this point for the Titans, given the need at receiver, offensive line, defensive back. Um, And so if you're going to take that guy, I think he needs to be Travis Kelsey or George Kittle or Mark Andrews, and he needs to be in that upper echelon. I'm not sure I'm convinced he's in that tier. There's a chance he is. Uh, Maybe he's just more in the top 10 NFL tight ends, and I, I don't think that's a risk the Titans need to be taking at seven overall. Good player, more pressing needs in my book. So if you've ever seen the movie Draft Day, Kevin Costner starts the day and he has a note and he writes Vontae Mack no matter what. So based on who you think might be there at seven, do you have a current Vontae Mack no matter what guy for the Titans? Yeah, I mean, I would say Malik Neighbors no matter what. Okay. Yeah, I would take I would take Malik Neighbors over Joe Alt. I would take Malik Neighbors over Olu Fushanu. I would take him over Roma Dunze. Uh, he is the... He is the difference-making wide receiver I think this organization needs that can be with Will Levis for 10 years, maybe. Uh, Rand Carthon talked about it in his side session that he's aware this is a, an issue the Titans have had for 25 years necessarily of, of needing a, an established wide receiver that can be here for a very long time. He seems committed to fixing that. I think you can look at the receiving room and you think of DeAndre Hopkins first and you go, oh, okay, well, Will Levis has has a number one. He has a a weapon. But we have to remember DeAndre Hopkins has one more year left on his contract. We also have to look at what we've learned this offseason about free agency, which is that the top guys on the market don't actually make it to the market. They're going to be franchise tagged or traded or signed big extensions. If you want that difference-making wide receiver, you have to draft him yourself. And uh, I'm not sure the Titans are going to be in this good of a position, seventh overall, in a draft class that's going to have three quarterbacks go off the board at the top of the draft with three potentially elite receiving talents to come off the board in the top ten. This feels like the perfect blend of opportunity to me, so I would go in to draft day with a post-it note saying, Uh, Malik Neighbors, no matter what. Sam Phelan, no matter what, covering the Titans and the draft up in Indy right now for A to Z Sports at Sam underscore Phelan. Follow him there. Well, Sam, I saw on your uh, X or Twitter uh, account there, Caleb Williams in his interview, and I even saw you ask a question uh, to an actual uh, other uh, player there uh, at the Combine. Uh, What were your thoughts on him just personally? Uh, Because a lot of people, you know, talk about a lot of things around him uh, and uh, maybe, you know, a little too far out there. What were your thoughts? I thought Caleb Williams came off as uh, far more charming than I think I anticipated. I, mm. I hadn't really listened to him talk. He, To be honest, he doesn't talk very often at all, uh, and he acknowledged that in his press conference. And he does have this bad rap of kind of being a diva, kind of mm. being, you know, uh, having all these demands and not yeah. wanting to play I in Chicago. It. It, it created a lot of drama. And so I was almost expecting Caleb Williams to get to the podium and feel that energy coming off of him. I thought he was a really charming guy. I think he came out actually a huge winner because I think all of the teams at the top of the draft and their fan bases and their media cores came away from the press conference saying, oh, wow, he was very good. He was very well-spoken. He's a very good dude. Uh, So he addressed a lot of the elephants in the room, like him not doing the physical Uh, uh, He addressed the fact that he was seen showing a lot of emotion on the sideline at various times throughout the season. I think he handled it like a pro, and I actually, you know, kind of sided with him on a lot of that stuff. So uh, Caleb Williams, I think, won a lot of people over today with his media availability and interested in seeing how it shifts the narrative around that first overall pick. Mm. Are the other guys getting closer, Daniels, I mean, uh, in May, you think? 
Uh, I think Daniels might be getting closer. May might be getting a little farther away. The the, the big concern with Jaden Daniels for me, because I think he just pops on tape, uh, is the frame. And walking next to him mm. at one point in the combine, I look I look over and I'm like, wow, I, I'm I'm bigger than this guy. I'm taller than him and I'm wider than him. And so I think when you look, I mean, we saw it with Bryce Young last year. Everybody's worried about not just the height but the frame. And uh, it, it didn't seem to go well in year one. That's my concern with Jaden Daniels right now. Uh, but I do think the buzz would be trending towards him at number two, and then maybe May is that third guy right now. J.J. McCarthy, I think, is gaining some steam as well. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, Sam Phelan for A to Z Sports. Sam, did you did you make anything or make much of, or what did you think of the Titans report card grades from the NFLPA? Um, I found it, I, I think the most interesting thing that I found was that the two highest, the two of the highest rated things are things that are no longer with the organization, head coach, train, uh, strength coach, mm. two things that they've moved on from. I find it peculiar that you're giving an F to team travel and taking care of families and those things, and yet the owner has a B plus. Uh, I'm not sure where that, like, where those things are, are connected. Uh, you do have to kind of dive into some of the the wording and the fine print on the grades to understand exactly what the players are reflecting on. Uh, like the owner, for example, is graded on willingness to invest in team facilities. The Titans players were very high on things like the weight room, and so it would make sense that ownership then receives a, a positive grade. Uh, frankly, the biggest takeaway for me is that the, this travel thing needs to change, and I'm interested in seeing if it is going to change with this new regime, with Mike Vrabel gone. Uh, it, we might find out if this is uh, something that Brian Callahan and Rand Carthon, as they kind of create their version of the Titans, are motivated to, to changing. But they're one of seven teams in the National Football League that still require rookies and some players to have roommates on the road. They have team employees and front office people and anybody that's with the team sitting up up front in the cushy spots of planes while players and offensive linemen and big dudes are sitting at the back and are crammed. I don't like that. Uh, we might, you know, get a second plane, figure out how to get these guys down there comfortably, let them stay on their own, keep your players happy on the road. Uh, and if that requires making an extra investment, I think it's something the organization needs to prioritize doing so uh, hopefully that will change in the near future. I don't want to see travel as an F on the Titans report card next year. All right, just on the way out, anybody's workout you're most looking forward to seeing up there, the player you're most excited to see in action in Indy? Well, number one, I would say uh, the guys that I was pumped to see went yesterday, and that was Tavondre Sweat because mm -hmm. watching that big boy run is always electric, uh, and I'm in, I'm in for that. Today, I'm going to be watching Roma Dunze. Uh, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., not running, like I said. Roma Dunze is. Uh, and one thing that he told me that I thought was just awesome when I was interviewing him today was that he wants to run just as a competitor. He said, I want to compete against generations before me and generations to come and just see where I stack up. And it's once in a lifetime, so of course I'm going to do it. He wants to come in sub 4-4. Four, four. Uh, and if he does that, might have a couple people raising some eyebrows. So I'm looking forward to watching Roma Dunes Day later this afternoon. Our man Sam Phelan, at Sam underscore Phelan, of course, A to Z Sports cover. Uh, he covers a lot of ground, and you can follow him there and uh, read all about it on A to Z Sports. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it, guys. All right. Thank we'll you. put in a good word for you with the cats. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. All right. I want to see you do the 225, how many reps you can do. Yeah. Uh, prediction eight. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I have been. I, I'm good on the bench. I, I don't know though. I haven't done 225 in a minute, but at my peak, maybe eight or something. That I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go with that. All right, we'll take it. We'll just, we'll just write down that number like a Wikipedia page. We'll take your word for it. Okay. Always good catching up with Sam Phelan.